All right, I'm here in the middle of a cornfield mine on the home farm, which this isn't a bad field. We used to grow a lot of alfalfa here. Uh, yeah, well, this field is a little bit on the droughty side. Not bad, just a little. But anyways, this summer in July, it was so bloody dry. I think we only had a couple tenths of an inch in the month of July. And the corn looked like pineapples and everything. But then we started getting some rain in August and it really pulled through. Now, this corn is maybe six and a half feet tall. This one here ain't even six feet tall. And the ears are low to the ground, really low to the ground. Here's my knee. And that's where the ears are. But if you look at them, my my goodness, I mean, there they are. They're they're low to the ground, but they're a full size ear. It's like it took the energy from the from that it would have been put into the plant and actually brought along right up into the ear. Now I know there's a big space here. I don't know what happened. Uh, when I planted it, but for the most part here, I can go in here and it's all just, you know, we're dried down now pretty well. It's probably 25, 28 percent moisture. But still, this isn't even at my waist. And here's my belt buckle and there's the ear below it, so it is kind of, kind of short. Now, these are medium tall varieties and uh, let me tell you, I, I, I don't think I'm going to be disappointed at all with the yield that I get off of this. I know it's going to be well over 120 bushels just to look at it. Uh, it's not going to be a bumper crop like we had last year, you know, that 170 range, 180. But uh, after what this went through, maybe I will be surprised. You never know. This could pull 100, 150. Um, yeah, maybe I'll be thoroughly surprised, which I'm kind of hoping. But the whole field, I mean, I'm walking right along here, and you can just see. Now, I think just one row unit might have been light. I don't know, something ripped that out. Or the deer got in here and did something to it, but here's one that's like mongo ear. I mean, that thing's the size of my goddamn arm. Anyway, uh, yeah, look at this stuff. So I don't know. We're going to start picking here probably in the next few weeks. Um, not yet because my bin's not empty yet. I had a little trouble in there that means I don't want to talk about it. But to get her get down here to the outer edge of this field and it's not a good deal. It really you know, there's four wheeler tracks here along the edge. But still, you can see the ears are really low to the ground and they're not bad. Now this is a wet part of the field. This is the wettest part of the field right here where I'm walking to. And uh you know, now of course we're getting some bird damage here. Um, but here's the wettest part of the field. It's never really dried up this summer. So, look at it. It's, uh, to be honest with you, I actually think the ears are a little smaller. I mean, girthy as could be, but the length of them you know, the length of the ear really isn't any different or maybe a tad smaller in the wet part of the field. Uh, the only real difference is the stalks are 10 feet tall and the ear is up off the ground a good bit, but, and it's a girthy ear. Now we use full season corn too. We're not running, you know, 95 day corn. Our corn is probably the longest season. Well, I know the longest, the longest day corn we have is 117. The shortest was 111. So we're all in that 100, between 111 and 117 day varieties uh, that were planted in, uh, mid to late May, early June, mid June. So I think the last corn that I planted was June 20th or June 19th, something like that. And uh, yeah, that's all in, that's all drying down. Now I, I'm going to walk to the next field. It's only a small field. Uh, but it's shaded really well, so I'm going to close up the camera, and then we will uh, take a peek at that. I got a feeling that that corn is going to be a lot taller than this variety, but it is the same variety, but it's a lot taller than what this field is because it's shaded from that intense heat that we had. So anyway, here we go. Okay, um, I just walked maybe another hundred yards down across the field. And here's the opening. There's walnut trees there. But here's the 
here's that's all walnuts there. But anyway, uh, here's the opening to the other field. Now, as you can see, this is what I would normally see in the field now. Wow, you got some nice looking ears to it. Oh, let me get it stripped down a bit there. Look at the size of that ear. But as you can see, it's full all the way to the top. Um, but it's not crowded. Or it's not, you know, out in the, in by itself. Deer came along and knocked that over, but uh, hopefully I don't lose it. Uh, but yeah, next to it, then you get a couple of nubbin ears here like this. But even that, though, I mean, it's producing. Uh, but the plant height is a lot higher. Population is 36,000 part plants per acre. But uh, for the most part, I don't think that the ears are really any bigger on the corn that's obviously 10, 12 feet tall. Now, why in heck it's like, to, oh, well, this is just on the corner. Um, but yeah, I'm going to walk on in here. I don't think they're any different in size. So, yield-wise, I mean, yeah, this is along the edge, but the deer will get in here and they'll eat, eat on that and really cause me a pain in the ass. But, uh, yeah, you get on out in this field, and I don't think the yield is going to be any different. It doesn't look any different. I know it, it is a... Wow. God damn. You believe that right up to the tip there. Look how close they are. I mean, these things are like five inches apart. And they're they're filled right out to the tip. Now, this variety of corn, or this company of corn, this is Fielder's Choice Corn, uh, which is no longer available to us. Because Monsanto bought it out. Of course, all you friends of Monsanto out there, I'm not really. Uh, they're like a necessary evil here in the United States. But... Uh, they they bought out Heartland Seed, they bought out Fielder's Choice, and a couple others, Crows, I think. Uh, and now they've come up with Hubner. So that's what we'll be able to buy next year's Hubner Seed. But there's no, the representatives that we had through Fielder's Choice are all gone. And I've dealt with Fielder's Choice for a lot of years and kind of get to know these people. And, you know, the, the new... The new dealership is like the old style dealership, just a farmer network of guys that really don't know anything about the seed corn that you're, they're selling. So our dealer representatives are, I don't know, I guess they know the varieties that they grow, but they don't know the full spectrum of the variety. So I'm a little disappointed as to the way we got to buy the Hubner seed. And I may not be buying it, I don't know. But anyway. That's my corn update. I'm actually very pleased as to the way it looks. I mean, it's no Midwestern crop, but yeah, you know, I got close. I got over 200 acres of corn to pick, so yeah, you know, we'll see lots of videos of that. But anyways, thanks for watching.